Come here. I'm going to tell you something. You see this? This is a gargoyle gecko. It's a better pet than getting a bearded dragon. Don't get a bearded dragon if you're thinking about getting a pet reptile. In all seriousness, bearded dragons are great pets. I've owned now two of them in the past. They've been fantastic pets. I've actually even used them as therapy animals while I've been doing counseling. So I think they're, they're great, but they're not the easiest animal to keep. They're not the, the, you know, a lot of them get surrendered because people don't understand what they're getting into. When purchasing the cute little bearded dragon, and you see that the cheap price of anywhere from, you know, 50 to $100 for the animal, and you don't understand what goes into it. So today I wanna go over the top five reasons why this, a gargoyle gecko, makes a better pet than a bearded dragon. Number one, the diet. It's so much simpler, okay? It is such a pain in the rear to go and have to go buy groceries, right? They need all the different greens. You can't just give them iceberg lettuce. They need specific things like collard greens, mustard greens. These are not easy things to find all the time unless you're growing them or you go to a whole foods which a lot of people can't afford you need to go and find special greens for them and they need to start eating them plus they need insects when they're babies they eat way more insects when they're adults they should eat less insects but they get addicted to how good those insects taste so the diet in a bearded dragon is just a pain in the butt when it comes to, to these guys, they eat the best food in the world, right? This is just an example of it, right? There's different brands out there. I'm not promoting one over the other, but it's a powdered diet. You mix with water. It's way less expensive over, you know, the run of it. Uh, this, you know, tiny little package, which I got from a, a breeder who sent me a gecko. I, you know, I, I've got such big bags. I haven't even used that one yet. Um, you mix it up. You, you squirt it out of a ketchup bottle, you're good to go. Now, you sh still should feed these guys some live insects. Way less. So it's going to cost you less. You're not going to have to keep them alive in a tub, in, you know, unless you've got hundreds and hundreds of them. But I've got 20, and I buy them, throw them in, and we're done. Okay? It costs me less than probably $4 to buy the amount of insects that I need for my collection of 20 gargoyle geckos, where every time I went in, and tried to buy uh, roaches or crickets, because I like roaches better than crickets, let's just be honest here. What it cost every week to feed my adult bearded dragon was probably about $10 in roaches a week. I had to start breeding my own, which not everybody wants to have a bin of roaches. You try to convince your, your significant other to have roaches in your house, unless they're in this game, they're not on board with that most likely. And if you live in certain states, you can't do that anyway. Crickets have their own you know, problem here and there. I won't even get into crickets. If you've kept crickets, you know how much they, they stink. Um, so this to me is so much easier. The diet is just so much easier. Just trust me. Reason right. number two is the size of the enclosure. Now, with a gargoyle gecko, you're talking about a gecko that only gets about 12, maybe 13 inches long with tail. So the size of enclosure you're going to need for a full-grown adult is really an 18 by 18 by 24 at its most. Now, you can go a little bit bigger than that, but typically that's a very decent size for a gargoyle gecko. Uh, you can even keep them in slightly smaller accommodations. And with that size, you can have a whole bunch of them in the same footprint that it's going to take to house one bearded dragon. A bearded dragon will start off in a nice 20 gallon, but that's going to grow real quickly. And then you're going to have to upgrade to a 40 gallon. And a 40 gallon really isn't enough. I know people keep adult bearded dragons in a 40 gallon, but please do not. They utilize the space. They should at minimum have a two by two by four enclosure. I custom built all of my bearded dragon enclosures and I went even bigger than that. And they would climb and they would explore and they were active. They weren't just lumps on a log. Only the super fat ones that you just overpower feed and don't get any exercise, the acram in a small enclosure sit there. 
They are active, intelligent animals. Please put them in the right size enclosure. Reason number three, that enclosure also needs to be heated. You need a hot side. You need a cool side. You need a basking spot. Those basking bulbs are known for breaking. They always break right at the wrong time too. So you better have some extras. Also, the UVB, they need 10.0 UVB. And you can't just put a bulb in there and forget about it. Every six months to a year, you need to replace that UVB so that they don't get metabolic bone disease or have any other issues. They need all that special lighting. Gargoyle geckos, that's the beautiful thing. They don't need special lighting. I've got LEDs. That's it. Now, some people think that you could use UVB on a gargoyle gecko. I don't think it's going to hurt. But with all the, the vitamin D that's put into the gargoyle gecko's food, I don't have any issues. Many breeders I talk to don't have any issues. So truly, they, they don't need, like a bearded dragon, all that special lighting. It's very simple. I don't have any special lighting on my Reason gecko. number four, that smell. Oh, man. Okay, it's not as bad as some smells out there. But when you walk into a house and they have a bearded dragon, you know that they have a bearded dragon. I don't know how to really describe it, but there's a bearded dragon odor. And that's not even to say after they take a dump because they have some nasty poo-poos, all right? Those things are big, especially after a big insect meal. They are nasty and foul smelling. So when you, you have a gargoyle gecko, unlike some of the other New Caledonia geckos, they don't really have that bad of poops. They're little tiny nuggets. They fall down to the floor. Because they don't crawl all over the glass and all over the sides of the enclosure as much as other New Caledonian geckos, they don't smear it all over there. I've never had that happen. Could it happen? Sure, it could. But mine don't. They fall to the bottom, and when I have a bioactive enclosure, the insects clean it up. When I don't have a bioactive enclosure, I just pick up the little nuggets, throw them out, and change out the substrate every so often. Bearded dragons, I was scrubbing that that uh, tile that I was keeping them on. I had them on different substrates. It is just, it's a nasty experience. It's like a giant slimy turd. Not my favorite thing. And the fifth and final reason why gargoyle geckos are better than bearded dragons is they live longer. So you're going to go and research your pet, find out which one's the best for you. You want to keep that thing for a while. Hopefully you do. If you don't, you may not want to get either pet because gargoyle geckos are going to live anywhere from 15 to 30 years on average. Whereas bearded dragons, they only live eh, roughly 8 to 12 years, sometimes a little bit longer. But to me, a reptile is not like a dog or a cat. You know, you know they have shorter lifespans. These guys really can live quite a bit longer. And so you can keep certain reptiles for a very long time and they can be your buddy. So when you're investing money into a really nice animal, gargoyle geckos will win because you can keep them for longer. So those are just some of the reasons why I think that gargoyle geckos just make better pets than bearded dragons. All right, so now that I've given you the five reasons why gargoyle geckos are better pets than bearded dragons, I'll give you my number one top reason why I'm wrong. Well, let's be honest here. When it comes to the king of chill, bearded dragons are still reigning supreme. But as you can see right here, gargoyles aren't that far behind. So if the number one reason why I'm wrong looks like this, am I that wrong? If you think that bearded dragons are better than gargoyle geckos, I'd love to hear why. Leave a comment down below and then please go ahead if you enjoyed this today, share this video, like, subscribe, go check out my new podcast. I've got three episodes out so far, maybe more by the time you see this video. It's a great time. We're learning how to keep gargoyle geckos from some of the best breeders out there. We've got some amazing guests coming on, and I just dropped a, a video on how to breed gargoyle geckos. So if that sounds interesting to you, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Gecko Cove. Hey, if you've enjoyed this video and want to encourage me to make more Gargoyle Gecko content, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, share this with a friend, and maybe uh, check out one of the videos right over there.
I'll see you next time on Gecko Cove.